We have lost a giant uh, in our field. He will have a lasting and enormous impact through all of us and the effect that he's had on us. Don Long exemplifies the highest ideals that Hopkins stands for. Uh, he's of course best known as being a Renaissance neurosurgeon. He did everything. He did it at the highest levels possible in every aspect of neurosurgery. But he's also a great scientist and his discoveries on the blood-brain barrier uh, by electron microscopy, his uh, steroids for cerebral edema really revolutionized our understanding of the brain and brain function. And then of course his work on spinal stimulation changed the entire field and saved millions of people from intractable pain. He also broke barriers in a quiet, unassuming way. Didn't allow the department to work in a silo. He worked closely with psychiatry, neurology, ENT, orthopedics. Uh, was a visionary on social barriers as well. He hired the first female neurosurgeon at Johns Hopkins, the first African-American. Always sought out what he considered the best people that would do the best job. He was also an extraordinary human being. He was a great mentor, a great teacher, a great role model and a great friend. His compassion and, and always seeing the best in every person that he dealt with is extraordinary and has had an enormous long lasting effect on all of us who are privileged to, to work with him and uh, be part of his circle of uh, friends and colleagues. He's a remarkable man and you know, his, his contributions in neurosurgery are, are many. He was definitely attracted to the legacy of neurosurgery at Hopkins. You know, the, the legacy of Harvey Cushing and Walter Dandy. He built these, these teams of people to help take care of patients, collaborations with ENT, collaborations with neurocritical care or critical care medicine, things that just, you know, weren't done regularly anywhere else. And that approach to, uh, to taking care of patients led to better care and, and built a department that just became stellar. I loved working with him. I learned so much having the privilege and honor of you know, working alongside him with many of his patients and the enormous regard that they had for him. Dr. Long was just outstanding at being able to say a positive statement about what's gonna happen that could help relax you know, the patient and their family and he was always there for them. And uh, it was inspiring to see uh, what a wonderful uh, surgeon, what a wonderful position he was. He was, at his prime, technically the best neurosurgeon in the world. He was um, very accurate, very efficient, very fast. When I came to the University of North Carolina and I started to build my practice and to take care of patients with vestibular schwann almost like Dr. Long used to do. He would do that surgery and he was always done at four o'clock. And then I started doing that surgery and I was always done at 11 o'clock at night. And so he was just so efficient in what he did. So in the operating room, his eyes never left the microscope. His hands never left the patient. He drove that microscope with his feet. It looked like he was driving the first Tesla. Everything was thoughtful, planned and executed and there was never a wasted moment. Um, and uh, it's, it's like watching Leonardo da Vinci in the OR. Yeah, Dr. Long had tremendous stamina. He, uh, he would travel to China and then come back and do three cases and, and then get on a plane and um, and go to another trip. He would have all kinds of administrative meetings. He would have mentoring meetings. I'm sure he had to do discipline and the other unfun parts of the job of being a leader. And he was in the operating room and kept a very busy schedule and taking care of patient, patients. And yet he also loved and was devoted to his family. And wherever Dr. Long was, that's where he was. He was absolutely in that moment. Uh, witnessed how he interacted with the people around him. He was so gracious and so uh, respectful and so uh, thoughtful and you know you could feel from 100 feet away even when he walked by in the hallways of Meyer uh, there was something very both distinguished and gentle about him. Dr. Long through his leadership 
establish an atmosphere, a culture of equity. There was never an instance of gender discrimination nor racial discrimination for that matter. I remember early in my career, there was a racist patient. So I don't want a black doctor on my case. And uh, DL said, uh, there's a door. At his core, he was a honest, just person and he conducted his practice and his interaction with others that way. In many occasions, I said, what would, uh, would, uh, would Dr. Long do? The way he was uh, calm and effective approach, even in dicey situations. I actually expected a typical neurosurgery um, personality, which is aggressive, hard hitting and and uh, I got just the opposite. He had a tremendous sense of humor. He was not, uh, th there was nothing pompous about Dr. Long. There was nothing on a pedestal about Dr. Long. He played baseball, wanted to pitch for the Hopkins team. Uh, you know, he came to pool parties. He, you know, he enjoyed being with uh, his people. Yeah, we, we had journal club at his house. The faculty got to eat dinner there. We, we came after dinner, but... Uh... <laughs> Dr. Long spoke in, in a sort of Midwestern way and also in conversation, he frequently sounded like he was giving a lecture. Booming, baritone voice and a great laugh. Yeah, I don't know if I'm the best person to imitate him, but, uh, but everybody tries. <laughs> We all mimicked it. Um, we, I mean, you know, because we, you know, we uh, revered him, right? I mean, when when people do that, that's because they think so much of him. When Al Sills and I were the chief residents in 1997 at the chief resident dinner, we decided we would gently roast Dr. Long, and so we came up with his ten most famous quotes. And the one that I remember the best from that is he used to say. Well, that's just hard cheese. I like to think I had a pretty good um, impression back in the day. You know, it started with holding the jacket as well. Al, I'm not sure what we're going to have tomorrow on the schedule, but we'll be up to the task, whatever it might be. One day he said, John, don't suck the air. One time, one of the chief residents was operating with someone else. And DL came up and said, well, what are you guys doing? And he didn't even turn around and said, Ben, I know it's <laughs> But it was DL. Yeah. I think that's when he knew I did a pretty good invitation. <laughs> Kevin Bacon and the seven degrees of separation. What I will tell you after having just gotten back from our academy meeting uh, in Georgia, it is really about two degrees of separation with Dr. Wong and that he, everybody either, if you didn't know him or directly knew him, you knew one person that was actually very closely related to him. So his his impact in the field of neurosurgery and on a personal level is immense. Yeah, but he, he really, he really um, encouraged everyone to, uh, to strive to improve every day. At, at some of the hardest moments of my life, um, when, when, for example, in 1996, when my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, um, I went to Dr. Long and I told him that I needed to take some time uh, to be with Rachel. And um, his response was, I'll cover for you. You know, do what you need to do. I'll take care of your patients. I just was overwhelmed with gratitude uh, with how humanistic he was quietly behind the scenes of, of really uh, encouraging me to do the right things and of also supporting me to do the right things. And, um, you know, that, that debt of gratitude was, uh, can never be repaid. You know, he was always jumping into the boat of whoever he was with at the time. So in the process of doing that, raised up, you know, the whole group, the whole department. And so that, um, you know, it continues on through today. And, uh, and so the whole approach of the department to training and, and taking care of patients and interacting with other members of the School of Medicine really was, uh, was his doing. Carry with me his teachings and constantly. Dr. Long had a huge heart and he had that heart um, that extended in every direction. 
I think we can reflect upon our lives and at every instance there's probably somebody who who made the biggest difference in terms of who we are, you know, came in at a certain point and changed the trajectory of our lives. Uh, I can think of about three people in my life and he's one of them. So I wish I'd had one more chance to tell Dr. Long how grateful I am for everything that he taught me, for the support he gave me, for the kindness that he showed people, and for the role model that he was to all of us. Don, thanks. You will be remembered by others and certainly by me for being such an important person at Hopkins for so long and for doing so much. His style of caring for patients uh, has influenced really two or three generations of trainees in neurology and neurosurgery. So thank you, Don. You know, we carry, you know, the torch forward. We hope, of course, that those behind us will do the same. I am deeply and eternally grateful for the opportunity you gave me to train at Hopkins. One of the greatest gifts of my lifetime. I would uh, you know, thank him for being patient, always kind, and always looking out for us, always looking out for our interests. Any of us who could achieve 10% of the things that he has been able to, able to achieve throughout his career, uh, we would consider ourselves exceptionally, extraordinarily successful. I think that's probably the best gift of all is that, that you know, legacy of mentorship and friendship that he has given. Because I don't think I've ever met anybody that wouldn't consider him a friend. Never be satisfied with what you are today or you will never be what you are not tomorrow. And that's the guidance that I would leave to the next generation.